You are listening to ChartingWealth.com for Thursday, the 17th of December, 2015. Where do we always start? We always start with IYY. That is the Total Market Index Fund. It tracks everything that's going on in the market. What do we see happening over the last two days? Well, we have a two-day candle that ended two-day up. Still the up movement as far as where the market opened and closed is well within the bounds of the big down candle on the 14th. So we do have a couple of days of upward movement today. Technically, this is Wednesday. Technically, the market was up 1.47%. Now, how long will this up move go? We don't know. But we still don't have a crossover going up on our large chart. We still have the down movement started on the 2nd of December. So technically, we are down on the long chart. Now, if we go, and that's our two-day chart, if we go to the four-hour, the half-day chart, we see nice clean-up movement. We had a great crossover. The derivative oscillator crossed at the same time as the MACD crossed the red signal line. We have two days of solid upward movement on IYY, the total market. Now let's look at an index that's a little bit smaller, but again makes up a lot of the volume of the market. That is SPY, which represents the S&P 500, another exchange-traded fund that tracks all the stocks in the S&P 500. Looks very similar. We've got up movement over the last two days where the candle closed on the 16th. Still, that movement is well within about the middle portion of the large down movement on the two-day candle from the 14th. If we And again, so we're still in a confirmed down move on the large chart. We haven't had a crossover going up yet. If we look at the four-hour chart, we see that it crossed over in the afternoon, actually morning, of the 16th of December and has continued to move up. It crossed over on the MACD along with the derivative oscillator crossing over going up. So again, upward movement for the last two days. So just like with the IYY, large chart still in a down move, short chart is in an up move. So we don't have confirmation. We have you could call that schizophrenia, <laughs> a manic depressive. We have we have the one chart going down, the big chart, which is our controlling chart, small chart going up. You might say, does that mean we get in now early? No, it does not. You don't get into a pattern until the large chart has established the pattern. The smaller chart, which would be the four-hour chart, rolls over in the opposite direction, then corrects back in the direction of the big movement because you can't forecast from a small chart what's going to happen on the big chart. They will fool you more often than not. That's why we have big charts. Big charts are big waves. Big waves control until there's enough small waves to change them. So that doesn't mean that every time the market rotates around, it's an entry point. It just doesn't mean that. All right, now we're going to go back to the two-day chart. We're going to look at the last of our charts. As far as our indexes go, then we're going to look at gold. This one is QQQ, which represents what? The NASDAQ 100. Big down movement on the candle, two-day candle on the 14th, the two-day candle ending on the 16th. Up movement, but again, well contained within about the center eighth of that down candle. So when we, and, and again, that reversal in the market started somewhere around the 30th of November. Now, if we go and look at the four-hour chart, we see on the NASDAQ 100 it crossed over during the afternoon on the 16th and the derivative oscillator crossed over at the same time. Whenever you see those patterns in the crossing over derivative oscillator and the MACD at the same time, typically a good sign. So we are still looking at downward movement on our big chart and again upward movement on the small chart, but the small chart does not make the big chart move necessarily and it does not mean we have a confirmed up move in the total charts. So <clears throat> that's where we are on all three, on IYY, the total market, S&P 500, and the Qs. All three of those confirmed down moves still on the big charts, up moves on the small charts. It means you don't have a trade at this point. Now we will go back to the two-day chart, and we will look at gold. Oh, and for the record, all three of those indexes were up about one and a half, close to one and a half percent. Now gold is up. 1.18% for the day. 
And if we look at what gold's doing, on the two-day chart, gold has now crossed over going up on the two-day chart. Let's take a look at the short four-hour chart and see what it tells us. Well, our four-hour chart has crossed over going up. It did so in the afternoon. Four-hour chart still not working very well for us like it did in the past. We do, however, have the short chart on gold crossing over going up in the afternoon. So that is an up move on the two-day chart. We had it cross over on the same day, which typically is a good sign in a chart when you have both of the charts crossing, the long chart and the short chart crossing at the same time typically means that it is a good point at which to get in. Now, we used to be able to rely on our four-hour candle on gold. Not been good for us, but as far as technically how we call this, we have a lot of room for movement up. We have confirmation on the short chart and on the large chart crossing at the same time. I would encourage you, again, in your virtual trades to consider finding a good entry point right about here. See how the market opens in the morning on Thursday. And after the first hour of trading, which we call idiot hour, that is where the market makers are rating the stops and all sorts of crazy stuff happens. Once the market settles out, look at things around 10, 30, or 11 and see if it makes sense at that point to get into gold on an up move in a virtual trade. Remember, we're talking about virtual trades. We are not a stock calling service. We do not give advice on trading. We, give advice, we help you understand how the markets work with education and using virtual trading techniques. Uh, again, for those of you who are new, if you haven't had our course already, please go take it. It takes just about 12 to 15 minutes. It's our quick down and dirty on how to read a stock chart. We've also got great uh, training on our website, chartingwealth.com, and we'll send you the free layout. How do you get all those things? You just sign up for at chartingwealth.com, sign up for our newsletter, and we will put you on the list. We will send you right out the charting layout that you can download, and it'll actually link you right into freestockcharts.com. Operative word there is free, and you'll get the layout that we use on our daily reviews and our weekly reviews. Also, you will get the link to our How to Read a Stock Chart video, everything you need to get started. Thank you so much for listening to us from chartingwealth.com. Don't forget, we're going on hiatus up through Christmas. So that starts tomorrow, tomorrow. So thank you so much for listening to us. We appreciate you joining us as you do every day on chartingwealth.com.